tonight. Get Windows 10 for free and start channeling your inner nine-year-old because soon you'll be playing Minecraft like you've never played it before. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 258 for Wednesday, January 21st, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Invest in yourself for 2015. lynda.com has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the top story. Microsoft officially unveiled new details today on Windows 10. The biggest news is that users running Windows 7 or later can upgrade to Windows 10 for free during its first year. Now, this is not just a one-time upgrade. Once a Windows device is upgraded to Windows 10, Microsoft will continue to keep it current for the supported lifetime of the device at no additional charge. The Register's Ian Thompson is at the event in Redmond and joins us now to talk about other big bombshells dropped by Microsoft. Welcome, Ian. Thank you very much, and hello to you. <laughs> at the event today, we heard a lot about how Windows 10 will work across desktop and mobile platforms. We got lots of information about Cortana on the desktop, Microsoft's new browser, codenamed Spartan, and more. But let's start with the truly important announcement, holograms. Now, you just tried Microsoft's HoloLens. We're dying to know. What was I it like? I just run up from the lab, and I have to say, it's bloody marvelous. <laughs> Um, I was just blown away by it. They had four demos, one where you're using the design studio, one where you're making a Skype call, one where you're using a version of Minecraft. But the killer one for me was uh, the, the thing they've done with NASA, whereby they take photographs of the Martian surface, you put on a headset, and you're literally there. I mean, all these photographs are done into, are built into a landscape so you can peer and look underneath rocks. You can just get a, you can walk across the whole thing. You can check out various other areas for, for, for investigation. It was just, it blew me away to be quite frank. And I know it's very much a developmental product at the moment. We didn't get to try the, the black flashy headsets that they had on uh, for the demonstration, which I suspect have a battery life measured in minutes and said we were carrying around a battery pack and a processor pack and using very sort of jury rigged headsets but the results were absolutely stunning well i would ask you to show us a picture of the device but i've heard that they confiscated your phones before you went in oh no phones no bags no recording devices of any kind it's very very tight security there which is odd because they've actually put the research lab underneath the visitor center i think they're hiding in plain view on this one huh so, so the device that you tried on doesn't look like what they're going to look like. No, no. What I had was basically um, a, a headset, a sort of a, a jury rigged headset with Velcro straps, uh, lenses across the eyes, and then a shoulder pack containing batteries and what looked like three processors, judging from the number of fans on the back, um, all linked in to, to the central headset. They did have display versions of the flashy black headset that you saw there, but we weren't allowed to try them on. Um, they apparently, I mean, based on the demos, they do work, but um, based, given the fact that you've got three processors in there and an awful lot of compute power, I do wonder quite how much battery you could fit into that, considering, you know, I mean, maybe with some lithium polymer stuff, you could get some inventive battery storage. But whenever we asked about that, the standard response was, we're actually just the designer stroke, publicist, <laughs> stroke person showing you around. You need to speak to an engineer for that, which is my next job. Yeah, so they had their talking points ready. So how are the HoloLens glasses different from, say, Oculus Rift? Well, predominantly, you can actually see through them. They're clear lenses. Uh, so in the case of the Curiosity uh, thing, for example, all around me was the Martian landscape, including the, including the Curiosity rover. But they pre, they'd gone through and actually mapped out the computer screen that you could that you could use to navigate as well, and cleared that so that the hologram wouldn't cover that. But you could walk around the room, and it was the same with the Minecraft demo. You could walk around the room and feel safe, whereas with Oculus, you've really got to pull the peepers up to see where you're going, otherwise you're going to trip over something. Right. Did you get dizzy or anything while you were in there? No, no motion sickness at all. I mean, Oculus, I've, I haven't really felt motion sickness either. Mm -hmm. Slightly unsettling when I went over a rough part of the floor. But with this, you can see exactly where you're going. No motion sickness. 
And when it displays it, it displays it in a very realistic format. With a Minecraft demo, for example, we were digging holes in a wooden, you know, there was a wooden table there. You put the holographic specs on and you can dig holes in it as though it were Minecraft. It's um, really quite stunning. That is. I mean, and that's probably how they're going to get a lot of people, I think, don't you, to, to join oh, into this. Yeah, I mean, gaming-wise, gaming, uh, gaming -wise, I think this is going to be huge. Um, in terms of collaborative working with the guys at NASA, that's going to be huge as well. Mm -hmm. Not so sold on Skype holograms. I mean, I <sighs> one of the things I quite like about the telephone is you don't have to look at another person. So <laughs> right. looking at them in 3D is really, you know, not a great use case for me personally, but I can see some people really liking it. And for group meetings around the world, that would be really quite handy as well. And from the design studio thing, you can design, it's almost like an, an Adobe Photoshop, uh, Photoshop toolkit. You can use that to design 3D objects, color them in, increase or decrease the size, and then either print them yourself or send them off to a 3D printer for later creation. So, so we heard today that this is going to be built right into the operating system, right into Windows 10. How, how will that work? Um, well, they've put the API, or they, they're going to put the APIs directly into the operating system so anybody can use them. Uh, obviously, you'll need the hardware itself, which is going to make, uh, I, I suspect, is going to be hideously expensive. Um, but the, they say, uh, from what we've been told today, the operating system is ready to go for holograms. They've got all the APIs in there. The software is is, is ready to go. I'm, pres what, I'm presuming they're not actually going to preload the hologram hologram software you're going to have to buy that separately mm -hmm. um but the apis to develop around it are apparently already in there so the developers can get working great so uh let's shift gears for a second um what did we learn about cortana today it's going to be cortana everywhere you're going to get it on your mobile you're going to get it on your desktop and cortana from the way they were demoing it is I think going to become the key method of searching both the internet and also within your own computer. So for example, you could say Cortana, find all the photos on my computer from December and it'll get those up, bring them up and list them for you. And also it'll link in with Bing search and also with the Spartan browser that they demoed today as well. Right, tell us a little bit more about Project Spartan. Is that going to replace Internet Explorer? Uh, no, they unfortunately they can't replace Internet Explorer because there are so many enterprise legacy apps that have to use Internet Explorer, some of them going all the way back to IE6. Now, this has meant that Internet Explorer is a very clunky and slow and outdated piece of software, but Microsoft can't dump it for fear of pissing off all their customers. Right. So what they've done is get Spartan, which is the lighter, zippier um, type of browser, which you'll run as a separate browser, keep IE for when you have to use it, and I think... The thinking is you would use Spartan, Spartan when you want to actually use a web browser, i.e. when you have to. Um, and then Cortana is built into Spartan. So, for example, if you look up a restaurant, you'll get a little box in the top right-hand screen from Cortana saying, you're looking at this restaurant, would you like the hours, directions to it, and possibly a menu? Right. So is there any sense that this is going to be faster, more reliable than Google Chrome um, on Windows or Well, um, it Firefox? actually looks remarkably like Chrome um, in terms of the sort of the cut down atmosphere. Uh, we couldn't we haven't got hands on with it. That was not one of the things they were demonstrating today. Mm -hmm. Based on the demos, it does look pretty fast. But the only way to find that find that out is to try it in real world conditions. And it's not ready for that yet. It's going to be another three to five months, I think, before we get hands on with it. Well, now back to gaming, the important stuff. Microsoft says they're making the Xbox One work with Windows much better. What do you know about this? Um, well, basically now, um, if, you're, if you've got a Windows 10 PC, you can play online games with Xbox players as though you were both using an Xbox, uh, which in terms of collaborative gaming is huge. Um, you'll also be able to, within a home environment, for example, if your Xbox is turned on and your parents are watching TV on it, mm -hmm. you can then stream a game from the Xbox to your laptop at the same time. Now, you can't have two people playing two different games on the Xbox, mm -hmm. but you can, you can stream it. And there's a level of control. You can turn it on and off with your Windows 10 laptop, for example. Oh, great. Uh, now, one other thing they showed off was the Surface Hub. Did you get to take a look at that? I did. I did. Um, Microsoft's very big on these digital whiteboards, and nobody can quite work out why, because they seem to be the only people using them. Um, 
It was, uh, it's part of the 2012 Perceptive Pixel Buy. It's, this particular screen is an 84-inch 4K monitor. It's running a version of Microsoft OneNote, which is their note-taking app. It's got some nice motion sensors in there so that when you walk into the room, it automatically turns on. And when you walk out of the room, it will automatically turn off and wipe any files that were on there, having backed them up to your personal account. Um, it's one of those things which I'm sure Microsoft and other Silicon Valley firms will love. Um, if you're dealing with cash trap businesses, on the other hand, then it could be a bit of a, a weighty sell. They haven't given prices out, but it isn't going to be cheap. That's certain. Right. Well, thank you so much, Ian. I am so glad you came on and could tell us about the first look for the Halo lens. Uh, Ian, uh, what are you working on next? Uh, at the moment, I'm about to catch a, a, a plane to the airport, and on the plane back, plane ride right, will write up the uh, the hollow experience because that really was quite something. Yeah, we look forward to reading it. Thank you so much for joining us. No problems. Have a good evening. You too. Coming up next, what does Wall Street think about today's Microsoft announcement? But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Lynda.com. Lynda.com is used by millions of people around the world and has over 4,500 courses on topics like web development, photography, visual design, and business, as well as software training like Excel, WordPress, and Photoshop. Are you looking to sharpen your coding skills or design the next great app? I recommend Lynda.com courses like Programming with iOS, Simple Android Development Tools, and Code Clinic, an innovative series where each month, Lynda.com issues a code challenge and authors share their solutions using different programming languages. Whether you have 15 minutes or 15 hours, each course is structured so you can learn at your own pace from start to finish. All Lynda.com courses are taught by experts who are accomplished professionals at the top of their fields. Do something good for yourself in 2015 and sign up for a free 10-day trial to Lynda.com by visiting lynda.com slash tn2. You'll get unlimited access to every course on lynda.com, including access on your iOS and Android devices, plus new courses as they're added each week. That's lynda.com slash tn2 to try it free for 10 days. Go ahead, I challenge you to learn something new in 2015. And now back to Microsoft's big news. We've also invited Reed Albergati, tech reporter from the Wall Street Journal, to get Wall Street's reaction to date today's announcement. Are you there, Reed? I'm here. <laughs> so how much does Microsoft need Windows 10 to work? Oh, I mean, I think big time. Uh, there's obviously Microsoft has a long and checkered past with coming out with new operating systems. Um, I think if you if you look at the stock today and after hours, it's, it's just about flat. So I, I think you know you could probably read that as you know investors are are kind of in a, a wait and see uh, situation here. I think that the the hollow glasses are you know a really interesting development with Microsoft because I mean I think we've we've seen Oculus um, create a lot of buzz and really spur this whole industry. Um, the industry has really come to life since. Facebook acquired Oculus, um, but I think you know, like e listening to Ian's description of the actual technology, it sounds like they're a long, long way off, maybe even farther away than than Oculus from market. I mean, if you're you're still having to carry around this giant battery pack, so I think there's a lot of question marks about whether you know whether it can work. You're raining on my parade a little bit, Reed. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get one next week. I do too. Believe me, I think it's. I, I actually find virtual reality to be a really exciting possibility. Um, it's a whole new, it's a whole new platform. I think we've, you know, especially as journalists, um, we're always looking for the next big story. I think virtual reality has the potential to be that, but it is. It is a long way off. I also, I have not tried out the Microsoft glasses, but I have tried out the latest version of the Oculus, and even that. Is it was attached to a computer with a something like you know thousand dollar processor on a computer. Um, they want to get this thing down to three or four hundred dollars. Well, if if even just a graphics card um, is a thousand dollars, it's not it's not going to happen anytime soon. So I think we have to be a little realistic. I I think it is exciting. It will happen, but maybe not next year. Right. So right now it's just PR, but you're in a wait and see mode. Yeah, it's PR. I mean, I think I think that's right. But but again, I mean, we're closer to this technology than you know than we ever have been, and there's been a big leap. I think in large part due to 
the the advent of the iPhone and the smartphone revolution because all of these these sensors and processors that um, go into to smartphones that Apple and Google have been pioneering are they're bringing the cost down and they're allowing virtual reality to happen. So I think it's real. I think it really will happen. Um, I don't know. I, there's a lot of skepticism, so I don't want to sound too like I'm <laughs> buying into the hype too much. But you know, at least I think five years from now we'll see we'll see some some pretty exciting products. Hopefully, even sooner than that. Right. Well, let's switch gears to talk a little bit about the free upgrades that Microsoft promised. They said if you're running Windows Seven, you can f upgrade to Windows Ten for free. That's not something they've ever done before. How how is that going to work for them? Well, I mean, Apple, I think Apple's switched to, you know, the, the same sort of model uh, where they want people to upgrade to the newest, the newest system. Um, I don't know. I mean, look, Microsoft, it, it obviously signals a shift in how they're viewing this. It's not, it's not so much, um, okay, we're going to charge people for the latest and greatest operating system now. It's, you know, we want to get people up to date. I, I think that shows that they're looking for different types of revenue streams, w what those are, whether it's advertising, data collection, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I think Jeffrey Fowler had a good tweet today and, and good coverage in our live blog of this where you know, he said, well, if, if Microsoft, if Windows 10 is free, then you know, who's, the, who's the customer and, and what's the product? Right. And I think that the leading question there is, you know, are users going to be the product? Is it is it like a Facebook model where, you know, the data collection is gonna is gonna allow them to bring in advertisers and marketers? And are we gonna sacrifice privacy for that? Yeah, that's an interesting question because I mean they're not making the devices like Apple is, so it has to come from somewhere, right? Right, right. Um, and maybe the glasses are are an example of that. Like you know, they need to, you know, maybe they're they're looking past smartphones in a way, like Facebook is looking past the smartphone platform and saying, okay, we missed the boat on that one. We want to get on the next one so that we can have a stronghold um, on either the next platform or developing hardware for the next platform. And we haven't seen Apple get into this game yet. Um, I'm sure we will eventually, but uh, I think Microsoft is, is trying to look down the road. Right. Well, it does feel a little bit like a game. I mean, Google Glass was pulled from the marketplace on Monday. And so now we get this news. I mean, how are those two related, those two stories? Well, I think, you know, Google, it, sometimes in technology, it's not, it's not good to be too far ahead of your time. Um, Google Glass, I think, I mean, I tried it out. I think it was, it's a really interesting product, but, you know, they were, they were, I think, pushing it a little too, too early. Maybe they should have been looking at the next thing. Maybe they didn't think big enough um, and, and wait it out a little bit until, you know, they could really make a big play on in virtual reality. So instead, they have this sort of almost like a joke product, um, Google Cardboard, come out and you know try to get into into virtual reality that way. Although I do think there's, you know, what I'm realizing with Google Cardboard is that if you look at at YouTube right now, there there's virtual reality on YouTube. So people are actually watching virtual reality videos on YouTube. So in a way. They're they're almost they've almost become the first platform for virtual reality. So, you know, Google Glass <laughs> was an interesting concept. It got them a lot of, like you said, PR. But um, they have already moved, they moved on from that a long time ago. I think. Yeah, it'll be interesting because usually Microsoft is the one that's in the position of coming out there too early. I and mean, they had the tablet in two thousand, and you know that was way before the iPad. So it'll be interesting because it seems like maybe this will be the other way around now. Yeah, yeah. And what's also interesting is that these these virtual reality products or augmented reality in Microsoft's case are happening really out in the open as the products are developed. I mean, you're looking, you see this with Oculus. They've open sourced all the hardware already. They might be years away from even coming out with a product. You almost wonder that if, if other people are working on things in secret that we don't even know about. Um, you know, we've heard a little bit about Magic Leap, but they've been less open about how the, the product actually works. So, you know, I, I could see somebody just coming out of nowhere with something really, really interesting. Well, thank you so much, Reed. What are you working on these days? Well, I'm, I'm covering Facebook and uh, we've got, you know, Facebook earnings next week mm -hmm. as well as Google. So it'll be interesting to see how Facebook did in the 
in the fourth quarter with their uh, with their digital ad business, and and maybe if they give us a little hint of what they might be doing looking forward. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. That was Reed Albergati, and he writes for the Wall Street Journal technical section. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thank you. And finally, we turn to the web's reaction to today's HoloLens announcement. Now, Mashable points out that the HoloLens already appeared in Back to the Future 2, which of course took place in 2015. And they tweeted a little picture of Michael J. Fox with those, looks a lot like the, the I want to keep wanting to call it the Halo Lens, but it's the HoloLens. Uh, also tweeting directly from the event, Windows Weekly Paul Therat said that, settle down people, we're not driving home in flying cars today. The hologram stuff is a bit much. He sounds like he agrees with Reed on that. Joanna Stern of the Wall Street Journal said, Hollow lens, totally awesome, if you don't mind pointing in the air all day. And Ed Bott, tweeting from the Q&A after the event, wrote, question I won't ask, will there be a hollow lens trade-in program for Google Glass? And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. If you want to learn more about what we've been talking about, check out Windows Weekly with Leo Laporte, Paul Therat, and Mary Jo Foley at twit.tv slash WW. And subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.